to them you, are, you have become a demon. The Assad have managed to, to classify all of the protesters despite the, 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 the sheer folly of this and, and, and the erroneous nature of this classification as jihadis, even though many of them are secular. And you can say that, that I'm one of the rebels, I'm outside the country, but I'm one of those who supported it, and we're secular. There are a lot of people like me in the, who are in the street and who are on TV and who are clearly a very secular face to this revolution, and yet he succeeded in demonizing us all and, 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 and portraying us as, as, as potential jihadis or, and jihadis. And as such, the minority groups inside Syria, especially the Alawites, uh, and to some extent the Christians as well, felt that there will be future retribution against them, that their rights will be violated, that they will be charred uh, 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 upon so and marginalized and, 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 and mistreated. And for this reason, they decided to prevent that. So the crackdown and the repression and the bloodshed that took uh, part by pro-Assad militias was meant as a preventative tactic. They didn't see our humanity. They saw, they, 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 they saw only uh, uh, what potentially could happen if change is allowed to take place. Uh, so the nonviolent ethos that we've tried to, to, to use in the beginning failed because of this combination of demonization uh, and uh, on part of the Assad regime of the protest movement and the indifference by the international community towards the protest movement. And uh, that allowed uh, step by step for the people who were uh, uh, calling for armed struggle rather than nonviolent struggle to, uh, to be heeded and to prevail and to uh, unfortunately bring about a situation where we now have a civil war and people feel that on a moral level they don't they're not sympathetic anymore with the revolution. We are, even though we, there, there were the crimes, quote unquote, that could be attributed to the rebels are nothing in comparison to what the pro-Assad militias have done, but nonetheless, somehow we ended up on the same moral plane, uh, in fact, uh, equally condemned in the eyes of the international community. People are now saying, we need to end violence as if, you know, uh, the rebels are as equally responsible for it as, as the Assad. So unfortunately, in a sense, uh, in that sense, the revolution fell. We toppled the regime, but we became equal uh, 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 militias, just like the regime's own militias. Uh, the country is fragmented, and now we need to find a way to put things back together again. International community has a role to play here. Without mediation between the different groups, there is no way this can be done uh, uh, on our own resources. This kind of internal conflicts always require a mediation process. Um, and that mediation process is complex. Part of it is political, part of it is picking up a side and also empowering it so they can at least reach parity so that, you know, they can sit down on a table because if one side feels that they are so dominant, uh, uh, then they will never sit down on a negotiating table to talk about anything. Uh, that is what many rebels and many activists are trying to say to the international community. Help us neutralize Assad's air power at least before you even tell us about political solutions, because as long as Assad feels he can pound his way out of this, he can bombard his way out of this, he's not going to even uh, listen to the possibility of, of a political solution or allow for a possibility of a political solution. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot of things that need to be done by the international community to help us rise out of this quagmire uh, into which we are allowed to fall.